Okay. Hello. Um, this year, there's going to be a big focus on English wine from me. Um, I love English wine. I think English wine is going to make a huge impression on the global market in the next couple of years, or at least this year, moving on. Um, and I think it's about time that everybody had the opportunity to try some. So I'm going to do some tasting videos on English wines that I rate uh, and sort of guide you in the right direction because it can be an expensive trip if you get it wrong. So let me take that on and uh, and point you in the right direction. So the first one I'm going to do is a gorgeous white wine from Devon, which is where I was born and raised. Uh, it's by the Lime Bay Winery and it's called the Shoreline. It's a bit bright, isn't it? That all went wrong. <laughs> Better. Okay, cool. So this is a blend of four grapes. So in there you've got Pinot Blanc, uh, Saval Blanc, Bacchus predominantly, uh, and I think two percent of Reichensteiner, which or Reichensteiner, which is a, a fabulous grape. Sort of it adds balance to uh, to a blend. Now this is a, a beautifully tart, dry, racy, acidic white wine. Okay, so it immediately reminded me of a uh, sort of really upfront New World Riesling, like, an, um, like an, a Nelson Riesling from New Zealand um, or something of that ilk, because it is unforgiving in its sort of strident attack. Beautiful colour, very, very clean, uh, almost green hints to it, like a, a Verdicchio or something similar. And the smell is limes, lemons, grapefruit. It's, obviously, this is a wine that's going to be fabulous with seafood. Obviously, you get a lot of seafood, a lot of crab and prawns and, uh, and shrimp and whatever um, in Devon, especially uh, down on the south coast. Um, and it's just a beautifully made wine. Now, what I like about it, and this is something that my good lady agreed with me on, which is worthy of note, um, is the fact that this is very similar. Once you get into it, very similar to a Sauvignon Blanc in that it's got a real kind of fresh, um, I'll try that again, fresh, grassy, heathery sort of aspect to it. It's almost got like a, a white pepper and green bell pepper um, sort of note just at the bottom there as well. But it's definitely a wine that I think your average Sauvignon Blanc drinker from New Zealand will go, you know, what English wine doesn't really appeal to me. They don't do a lot of Sauvignon Blanc. I haven't had the opportunity to try XYZ. I don't know what Saval Blanc is. I don't know what Reichensteiner is. I don't know what back I've never heard of these grapes. I don't trust any of it. And it's 12, 13, 14 quid a pop. I'm going to stick with Villa Maria. And that's fine. But if you do want something that's going to tickle your taste buds and be uh, like a different option that I think you're going to really enjoy, then this is a fabulous place to start. Now, this costs £13.10. Now, the reason that English wine is more expensive than your supermarket stuff, uh, well, there's a couple of bits and bobs. Predominantly, labour costs. Um, a lot of stuff is, is hand done um, in the UK still because you don't have the sheer industry that, um, that France or Germany or Spain or, or wherever um, has. You don't have hundreds of years of history of making wine where you've got all that stuff set in place to save you cost long term um so that that's that's a big a big one obviously a lot of people are going to have to buy their grapes because there isn't enough land that's free that you can have to have hectares upon hectares of um of vines on there so lime bay they use um they're very very specific about the growers that they use they use guys in um suffolk sussex Essex and Kent, as well as their own um, their own vines in Devon. Now, I was down there um, around about Christmas time, and I, I went for a, a tour of the winery from their head winemaker Liam, who is a thoroughly nice chap, very very engaging, extraordinarily knowledgeable. I mean, he's worked around the around the world as far as Australia. He used to make wine for Tyrrells, um, and he was telling me about what they do to get the best English wine possible. And it's a predominant, well, the two secrets, the thing to make great English wine um, is the timing of your picking, of your harvest. Now this was really gentle. This was, um, sort of, I think, between the 7th and the 21st of October um, of 2015. This is the, sorry, of 2016. This is the 16th vintage. Um, because they had a, it was a warm year, lots of good fruit, so they could take their time picking the best berries as they ripened as you went along. Um, so picking time, and the other thing is the source of the grapes. Now, Lime Bay spent a long time picking who 
who they're going to work with, who they're going to have as their growers. And he said, it's not like France where you can turn up and you get a boatload of grapes and some are great and some are rubbish and you just have a man standing there with his hand out going, come on, pay me. Um, it's very much a case of growers in the UK are very eager to please wineries and to make the best product they can. Um, and obviously that's because they want to make their business run. They want that, you know, they want the orders, they want the cash flow, they want all that stuff. And that's that's fine. I've got no issue with that at all. That's how the world works. But also because you have to have, you have to start with a decent product, i.e. you have to start with decent building blocks to make a great product. Now, annoyingly, it's actually very little empirical evidence to back that up, but it's just common sense, isn't it? If, you know, if you're going to build something amazing, you're not going to use cardboard or sand. You know, it's as simple as that. Um, anyway, back to the wine. So beautifully balanced, really racy acidity, on the nose, lo- like lime and lemon leap out of you straight away. And great, I've never found grapefruit to be a leapy kind of fruit, but it does in this one. So really, really fresh, really tingly acidity. My mouth's watering quite a lot. You'll notice that is, um, well, that is the wrong glass to be trying this out of. It's um, it's the first one out of the cupboard. I did actually open this bottle yesterday and try this wine out of a champagne flute. It's something I like to do. I like to get a champagne flute or something to try and deaden the wine. And that sounds counterintuitive. The reason I do that is so that I can... I can try and get a feel of the texture of the wine first before the flavours because sometimes a flavour can be so big and so strident and so all-encompassing that it can mask other areas of the wine that might need a little work. So if it's got a really powerful passion fruit um, kind of flavour, it might mask the fact that the wine is a little bit thin or a little bit lacking in balance of body or alcohol or whatever because it's got this big luscious flavour that tricks your tongue into thinking there's there's more to this wine than there actually is. So I like to try it in a different, couple of different glasses. It's not something that everybody's going to do. In fact, very few people are going to do this, let's be honest. Um, it's because I'm a nerd. But, you know, I do it so you don't have to, which is good. Um, but yeah, yeah, beautiful wine. I can still feel it's got a really long, very clean saline finish. It's got like a salty feel to it, which again is going to be brilliant with seafood. Um, now, I did actually get another couple of bottles. I got their um, rosé sparkling wine, which is glorious. And I didn't have enough left over to make a video with because me and my good lady just went through it. Um, and I've got a bottle of their classic cuvee, which I will I will do a tasting of. Um, I love sparkling wine. So English wine. Lime Bay Winery, they're based down in Devon. Um, Shoreline is the name of this wine, predominantly backers. I will go through the taste profiles of English grapes uh, probably next month. Uh, and this month, you know I keep telling you to subscribe in all my posts. Well, the reason I do that is because you get free stuff. Uh, this month I'm going to do a glossary of all the weird and wonderful wor- word wine words you hear people say that you know when you put together you think that's not that's not English I don't know what that means um so in order to decipher and decode that um I'm going to be sending something out hit subscribe doesn't cost you anything I'm not charging anybody anything um I've done dinner party cheat sheets where you can just do wine pairings very simple rules for wine pairings where you can buy these wines where they're on offer you know I'm saving you money if anything um but yeah Hit that and um, and share with your friends and keep the comments coming. I love the emails. I love all the to- all the talking points and everything. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, I will come at you with some sparkling and remember Romanian to come as well. I've got uh, six very very interesting wines I'm going to be doing on a, on a weekly basis uh, from March onwards. Cheers, peace.